On March 26, 1997, in Santa Fe, California, 21 women and 18 men took their own lives using a cocktail of phenobarbital, alcohol, and suffocation. This was the work of a cult known as Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate leader Marshall Applewhite had brainwashed his followers over a 20-year period into believing that a UFO hidden in the tail of the Hale-Bopp comet, which orbits Earth every 2,000 years, had come to rescue them and take them away to a level above humanity, and that if they could put aside their urges for money, drugs, and sex, they would be transported aboard the ship and taken off into the infinite. Marshall Applewhite, along with his partner Bonnie Lou Nettles, had somehow convinced 39 people to take their own life in search of salvation. How did they do it? Why did they do it? And what made people follow? Investigators who have been focusing on the family home of six-year-old murder victim jean Benet Ramsey have now issued two search warrants. Federal agents have taken into custody a man they suspect as the Unabomber. Uh, he was saving body parts such as... Something. Nowadays, crazy. Man, people are fucking stupid. Yes, they are. Yes, they are indeed. I mean... And in 1996, you say? Um, 97. It was 97 and it was, yeah, March the 26th, 97. Okay. In 1997, I know that was like, like a good, a good 30 odd, 20 odd years ago now, but like, yeah. you know, you had like Sony Walkmans and, you Big know, time. yeah. And like the invention of broadband and, and stuff like that. Bl- like blockbusters, you know? Yeah, mate. I think that <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how stupid people are to have to go and kill themselves in a cult in 1997, man. Fucking anyway, crazy, right? Yeah. Um, hi. Uh, welcome to episode two of Hear Me Out. Um, again, it's our new podcast on unsolved mysteries, conspiracies, true crime, um, anything that sort of uh, tickles our interest. But today we're looking at uh, cultism, it seems. Um, Big time. Yeah. Big time. So before we start, I just want to say, um, remember to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification button as well, and you'll get a little flash up every time we post an episode. Um, all this ep- cool content for you? All the cool content, yeah. Hit us up on Insta, at HMOpod, uh, same on Twitter, and hearmeoutpodcast.co.uk uh, for all things Hear Me Out. Perfect. Well, I'm... a. Uh... I'll introduce myself. I'm Luke. Um, and this fine young gentleman who's, uh, who's also co-podcasting with me is uh, Sam. Do you want to say hi, mate? Hi, mate. That's nice, nice, nice. Right. So let's, uh, na- now the spiel's been done, let's, uh, let's dive in, shall we? So um, what, what, what are your first thoughts other than this is mental? Um, I don't know, man. I mean... <sighs> Cultism, I've always thought, like, is a very sort of special subject. Um, and mm-hmm. I think people kind of think it's a bit of a, a fringe subject. Like, like, like my, my first reaction was, fucking hell, how dumb are people? But yeah. you can take it and just say, well, where, what's the difference between cultism and religion, ultimately? Basically, you're, yeah. fo- you're following a dude who's saying, oh, I know all the answers and do what I say. Yeah, well, this one, this one in particular, is ve- very linked into into religion. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll get into that, but yeah, this 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 one's pretty uh, pretty interesting. So, um, yeah, f- I mean, you guys have seen seen the introduction, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll quickly recap. So, there's there's a dude called Marshall Applewhite, um, and he. Well, we'll start at the beginning. I mean, he basically, uh, he was born and raised in Texas. His dad was a preacher um, or ministry work. Um, He grew up in, in, you know, in that environment. Uh, He then went and became, studied at university to become a music teacher. I mean, that's pretty normal. Um, he, He did that for a while. Then he got drafted into the army. He spent a few years overseas in the army. Um, then he came back, finished off his studies, uh, with the music. Um, and then this is where it starts to sort of 
changed slightly. So he he got into uh, well, he was he was married and he had two kids uh, when he came back from from the army. He got married, had a couple of kids, and then when he finished his teaching and started working uh, as a music teacher at a university himself, he started having sexual relations um, with some of the boys. Um, oh man, in, that's a bit in the class. I know a bit of a yeah. turn, right? So, so his wife finds out. His she Texas daddy goes, ain't gonna like that. This Texas daddy is not going to like that. So uh, he he yeah he gets found out. He's having this affair with these with these dudes in his class, and um, he yeah his 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 wife bins him off. Obviously, she goes, mm. nope, no more. Um, I mean, there's certain so, things you can do in a relationship. There's certain things you can't do. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, each to their own. But in in this relationship, she said no, not not happening. So that ends. Uh, he he gets a bit depressed. Um, he carries on. He carries, you know, he carries on teaching, and then he leaves the school in like 1970, and he cites, you know, depression and uh, basically emotional turmoil is is what he cites as his reasons to leave. Um, then he meets a lady by the name of Bonnie Lou Nettles, um, who was working as a nurse at the time. They became acquainted, um, and basically turns out she is as batshit as him, oh, or cool. more batshit. I oh, mean, cool. they're they're both batshit, but they're 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 kind of tandem batshit, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. So she, yeah, she basically they become friends. They. Uh, they're both into the same stuff. They're both into, um, you know, deeply into Christian religion. They're, they're both deeply into sci-fi. Um, it's a perfect storm of the things that you need, I guess, to to gain a cult. So at this point, um, at this point, was he like, uh, so is this like a relationship? Is this a, a friendship? It's platonic. It's, it's platonic. platonic. Yeah. She's married. She's married at this point. So right. he's, he's now, he's now divorced. Um, and yeah, he, he is now, then, then they're now having this platonic f friendship, but when she's, she's still married at this point, but that marriage doesn't last for long because when the husband realizes that she's hanging out with this other dude and they're being all crazy and talking about, you know, you, you spaceships and what have you, he's like, fuck no, I'm off. This right, is mental. So, so this is their, this is their, uh, neutral ground, I guess. This is what the things they have in common is, yep. uh, their, their spirituality, um, their, there's mm -hmm. sort of indoctrin indoctrination into the uh, into the church from a young age, yep. um, and yep. their belief in aliens. Absolutely. So they do what the the natural progression that, that they take place in, which you know any sane people do, is they team up together and they open themselves uh, a little bookshop uh, and or a learning centre. Um, and this was <laughs> natural it progression. Was basically, like, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, but, but, first base is like what kissing, <laughs> second base, kissing, yeah, yeah. yeah. fifth base, but, bookshop. Uh, Sixth. I've always tried to work up to the book bookshop phase and I can never get there. <laughs> Mate, I always go in far too hot. I go straight in for a bookshop and they're it's like, like, hey, 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 honey, do you want to own a bookshop with me? Oh man, yeah, I get, I get a slap uh, down. No. <laughs> if they say yes, you are. Oh, I've got a question. I've got a question. Uh, I've got to question your morals. Let's just say. Um, right, I would, fair enough. If I was a young lady, I would not be opening up a bookshop with me. Depends what type of book, so man. Uh, but you know, let's let's swiftly get back to it. So, yeah, they opened up this bookshop, but the bookshop is it's it's basically a bunch of religious texts uh, in one. It's it's a one stop shop for religious texts. Um, so they do this for a while, um, and then in 1973, which is like three years after he meets her, they decide to they 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 have all these ideas in their head. That these ideas are like, you know, they. Like I said, they're exploring life. They're exploring Christianity or different sects of it. They're exploring aliens at this point. So they've sort of they've got to themselves to a point where they believe that this crazy, you know, there's crazy shit happening in the world, um, and they take it on the road. They they decide to travel around America in 1973, uh, basically speaking to anyone that would listen to them uh, and their ramblings about 
um, about that, about UFOs and about aliens and people coming down. So what is what is the link between, and I, I'm trying to find some sort of natural progression between. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, we're we're both religious people. Um, we're opening up a bookshop full of religious texts. I mean, I'm guessing yep. if you're Christian, you're only going to be selling Christian texts. Um, and I, 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 this whole bookshop sells nothing other than. Religious no, it's just books? spiritual. Te- it's just oh. spiritual texts, and and that's what they do, and that's uh, yeah, it's it, it is it is nuts. But uh, I mean, in the grand scheme of this story, that's still pretty fucking normal. Let's face it. Um, so yeah, so they've got this bookstop. They've got this bookstop. They go out. They're like, right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go and get people to follow us, you know. And basically, Bonnie Bonnie Lou Nettles, somewhere in this chaos, she had admitted that she had had a vision before she had met Mar- Marshall. she had had a vision that um, these uh, extraterrestrials had visited her and said that she was going to meet him and that he was going to uh, basically be this divine leader. So she, and then she told him. So there is a part of it where she's kind of now whispering in his ear saying, yes, you're going to be the divine master and you're going to be like Jesus and you're going to do all this, all this cool stuff. And he's going, fucking right, I am. Right, hold yes. up. So so from 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 uh, perspective of this guy is, he had mm-hmm. a decent life. Um, he had mm-hmm. a decent career, stable marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, he got yes. absolutely publicly outed for bumming his students. And... Um, <laughs> And his life yes. falls, falls to pieces, yeah? And now here yep. she is to say, oh, every, I know everyone thinks you're a bit of a nonce um, and yep. uh, a bit mental, but actually I had a dream and I think you're this really special dude. He's going to feel pretty good with that. I reckon he's going to take that he's and run with He's feeling great, man. He's feeling great. He's like, I don't want to fuck you. You don't want to fuck me. But you're also massaging my ego and I'm like this big God, man. This is fucking great. Cool. So like, yeah. So she's so, she, so she's... She's as batshit. Let's go on a fucking road trip. Right. So they road trip. Um, they go around. They they do it for a few years and they convert one person. And this one person that they convert happens to be a friend who lived all along in Texas where they're fucking from. So that's mental. Right. Uh, so, so, so that doesn't go very well for them. Um, then... In, uh, in 1975, so during this kind of road trip in, hippieing across the country, trying to sell their, sell their ideas, uh, he, Marshall, uh, gets arrested, uh, for, <laughs> not for, uh, bumming, uh, or doing anything Makes super change. wrong. He, <laughs> he doesn't give a, a higher car back when it should have been handed back, right? So obviously the fucking government are like, no, this is wrong. You need to hand your car back, mate. So they slap him in jail for six months. Hang on, wait, now, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it can't just be he didn't give it yeah. back on time. Oh, it can't oh, be. It is. It no. is. I mean, I, I'd imagine that when they caught him, um, another. I mean, okay. The, <laughs> there is a slight little side side note to it. Okay. So they catch him and they say, "Oi, you haven't given this fucking car back, you loon!" And he's gone. Jesus told me to keep the car. Oh, okay. So at that point, he is actually um, so, telling the police that it's his now, and he has no intention of giving it back. I mean, how would you argue with that? I mean, Jesus that is, told me to keep. Oh, Jesus that, told me to keep the car. That is theft, but you know, in the name of the is Lord, it? is that okay? Mm, anyway, well, well, they didn't let it go. They fucking whack him, whack him in jail for six, for six months, and um, obviously in jail, you know, you got some time. You got some free time. So now he he goes, right, I'm in jail. I'm going to read all these books and I'm going to, I'm going to clue myself up. So he reads loads of science, science fiction. He starts looking into um, like the ancient astronaut hypothesis, which is where um, he, be- he starts believing that. Mm, Dude, I'm into this. A- Aliens. I know, yeah, I can. Uh, you I, look like you look like someone who's into this. I can, I can tell you all about this. Yeah. For yeah. anyone who doesn't know, the ancient astronaut hypothesis is that he believes that aliens came down uh, millennia ago and they they just dropped off a few humans. They went, I mean, like God, but not like God, like not like Adam and Eve, just like Bill and Ted. Right? He, they come. These these aliens come down. They they plop a few a few people on the earth and and then they with the hope that one day they're going to come back and collect a few of the good ones you know it's like oh you've been you've been nice you're coming back so anyway he believes in this he, he i mean i don't think up. that's the ancient astronaut um, hypothesis in general but that is probably their version of it 
the whole. I mean, that's that's the, the yeah. I mean, let's face it. There, there is way more in depth, and maybe maybe we could do a whole episode on that if if you want to smash the subscribe to. button and and we'll do an episode. Leave a comment. We might do an episode. We might not. We listen sometimes. Sometimes we could give less of a fuck. So. Put put a thing, and we'll we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, that's the that's the brief version of events. So then, six months time, he gets released. Um, still as crazy as ever, probably more crazy. Um, sexually satisfied, but but crazy. Um, and he, him, and Bonnie Lou Nettles, they now um, they head to California uh, from Texas. Um, they decide to sort of try flogging their ideas out that way and up into Oregon. Um, so they head up there and they, they do, they have some luck. They, um, they this is basically, a, pa- this is the hippies, isn't it? I mean, man, it, this is the hippies. They're yeah, definitely say, anything. Yeah. Late, I say late seventies. We're still in the seventies at the moment. You've got like a, a yep. fading hippie culture with all these guys and girls who are, uh, pretty keen just to, follow someone in the name of definitely getting high and, also, and being wild. Um, and, and also if you've ever got high, you'll know that if someone tries to sell you the idea of aliens existing, it's not fucking hard. Oh, I, I mean, mean, I can see how this you're goes. into it immediately. No, nope, no one's getting high and going, ah, aliens, man. Nah, nah they, they're not a thing. <laughs> yeah. You're high and you're like, I'm fucking into this story. Let's chat more. Cool. Um, so, uh, this, uh, this happens, yeah, yeah. So this happens. He goes out to California, Oregon, and you know you were in the mid seventies now, um, and they grow over a few years. They grow this from you know this one faithful follower in Texas to about seventy people. So it's quite it's it's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of, of people that are going. Yeah, I'm in. And the way they present it is they call it basically a, a celibate church. Actually, I think I've got the name written down. It's the Anonymous Sexaholics Celibate Church. That was the working title, original name of the church, right? So they, they're basically, they're going, if anyone's doing loads of sex out there, but feels like they shouldn't because they're not going to go to heaven, uh, join this because, you know, we'll get you in. We can get you a fast pass. Wait, um, hold up, hold up. But I thought, I thought this, um, I thought this, this group um, was all about not having sex. So it, it wasn't just like a, Come here. It, oh, it, 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 yeah, sorry, that's yeah, what I was saying. To- it's no, a, totally. It's a se- so it's Sexaholics Celibate Church. So it's basically people who were just fucking left, right, and center, like couldn't get enough of fucking. It's like, I, I'm so want to fuck, I'm addicted. Um, but, you know, that ain't, you know, that's not going to get me into heaven. So, they, so they're like, hmm, this church could help me. Um, later on, they changed it to, what did they change it to? Human inv- Individual Metamorphosis. That's what the group was then known as after they got all fucking. Okay, wacky. so this is this is this is when they start sort of changing uh, the ideology exactly. slightly, isn't it? So I think Absolutely. that uh, the 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 ideology of um, uh, of this dude is mm-hmm. changing through the times, um, and he's getting a little bit more wacky, and he's having to fit yep. the story around his own agenda. And I think we're at the stage now where his his whole thing is if you are to um, Go if you want to go to heaven, you need to mm-hmm. metamorphosize from this human form that you're in um, into some sort of spiritual, um, sexless. Absolutely. Well, you got you got to think about it. So you know we're we're talking late sixties, early seventies. He's being outed as an uh, as a gay man, effectively. Um, and back then, especially in somewhere like Texas, that's not going to be the best thing. So we'd imagine no. that his that his like he he probably felt quite well. I'd imagine he felt unbelievably confused, and therefore you know he's trying to put he's trying to make under he's trying to understand all of this stuff. So. The fact that he, he then creates this church, you're like, ah, okay, well, you've obviously got some fucking issues that you need to deal with, but he's dragging these other people in it. That tied in then with the fact that he's really into sci-fi. Um, so he basically, o- over time, they tell these followers that um, basically that, that they had been, vi- but he said, he says openly that he has been vid- visited by aliens and that they have told him that he is to be like the Messiah, that he is to be a leader um, to, to in order to save people from um, 
effectively the end of the world. Um, he wants them. He wants them to uh, follow him, uh, and not question it at all. So yeah, again, there's a power thing there. He's like, you know, but again, Bonnie Lou Nettles is also going, she's whispering in his ear the whole time. Yeah, you're the Messiah. I've been told that too. So you've right. got these, you've got both of them who are fucking loons. Um, but he t- they tell, they tell everyone in this group, right? That um, they're going to be, well, at first, first of all, so he, so here's the thing. He changes his story quite a lot during the teachings because obviously he's fucking making it up himself. So the story changes, but at first he tells the followers that um, extraterrestrials are basically that they've got a new planet for, for humans to go to. But in order to do that, your body needs to leave and go onto these ship onto the ship and and then that will be transported away to a new planet right but this this story changes because bonnie lou nettles she dies of cancer in in 1985 so she gets cancer she dies and all of a sudden he's been telling everyone or they've both been telling everyone the whole time um your body's going to be transported aboard these ships so there was no need for for suicide because you needed your body intact because it was going to go it, that's what was going to go and then you were going to change and evolve once you got to this new planet right um but bonnie lou nettles dies suddenly he's like fuck she fucked that one now i've got to make a new excuse so right. he says also also oh like, sorry mate go, go on. on no i was gonna say na- now he's saying that you don't you don't you definitely can't have your body because she's gone and she didn't take her, her body got left on earth. So now he, he detaches the body and says it's the spirit that, right, that gets, that gets right. lifted. I see. So uh, as a follower, um, you're yep. looking at these, these, these leaders who are convincing you. How could like, you know, um, the representation of this God that they believe in, I guess it's just normal God, um, mm-hmm. but it's a bit mixed up. Um, how, how could a, a leader, you know, die and leave their body here and go against everything that they're believing in. So yeah, I, I see he's going to have to quickly change that. The thing I thought was really, really fucked up was mm-hmm. um, the fact that at this stage, they're all sort of living together. This group of followers are living together in like camps and they're moving around America. Totally. Um, yep. And um, their family members are like in all cults, so a little bit worried. Uh, I think they do get mm-hmm. like controlled... Um, communication every now and then exactly so but, to start off with so to start sorry mate but to start off with yes you're right no i I, sk- I skipped a part there so yeah they're traveling around they're staying in these you know these camps for, for for years for like three or four years they're just traveling around living like nomads um and they're looking out for ufos and these kind of in, in in the rocky mountains they're like they're camping out um and yeah the one of the stipulations is that they need to you know give up sex alcohol they need to um leave their families they can't talk to them all of that is is part of his control thing although they don't no one's seeing this as weird well most of the people are like yeah okay well we need to we need to show him that we care but well then, to be fair if you're willing to believe that you know you are gonna be swept away by some aliens um yeah. to go to heaven physically uh-huh. swept away um if you're gonna believe that you know if he says oh and by the way you can't talk to your families that's like an easy thing to have to get your head around, so, isn't it? A hundred percent. Most people don't even like their fucking families. <laughs> it's not a hard. It's not a hard thing. It's like you can't speak to your mum and dad. Oh no. <laughs> so so yeah. So he so so at first this is the way it goes at first, right? But then families start po- poking around, asking questions. Journalists are coming and interviewing and saying this is a cult. You know, you're you're stopping people from seeing their families. So he then does start to let. Um, the 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 people see their families on mother's day um they can call them uh, a couple of times a year and they can have contact in order to kind of show face that this isn't a cult everyone's here of their own free will like and we're, and know, we're fine no, and we're fine no one's and yeah. everyone's totally fine and and no no one's worried and this is all this is all great so so that happens they they, they do that they speak to their families um and it and it makes yeah it makes sense that he would that he would do that um, but he didn't, then, he didn't, but so, he, when she died, uh, he didn't tell any of her family or she didn't tell any of her family, but she was sick. And I think no, her family only found out that she was dead like six months after she had died. Absolutely. And, um, it, 
I, he must have been like fucking freaking out. One, this was like, I mean, he he loved her dearly. He 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 went on the record basically saying that he wa- he wanted to find a soulmate. I mean, they used to have like weird names for each other, like Bo and Peep, because they they saw themselves as like leaders of a flock. Um, hi, my name's Bo, and this is my friend Peep. Little it's Bo Peep. Weird, okay, I get Little it. Little Bo Peep, right? Okay, so oh, you can come up with a cooler name than that. To be fair. I would have called myself the Terminator. I'll be Dragon. One thousand. Yeah. Are you going to be Dragon? Fuck. I'll be I Dragon. Pick Dragon. Yeah. El Diablo. Yeah. That means the fighting chicken. Okay. Everyone, just um, who wants to join our cult, uh, join the, in, in yeah. the comments. In the comments, put what your cult leader name would be. So I think I'm going to go El Diablo. You're going. Dragon. You got dragon. a chance to change it if you want. All right, uh, dragon. Okay, well, dragon and El Diablo. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take yeah, I'm gonna take that away and I'm gonna come back to you uh towards the end of the episode. <sighs> I th- All oh. right, you won't find better than Dragon though. Um right. so so yeah, so yeah, so she so she dies and 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 they have to, you know, he has to adapt. But again, he's super depressed now. Like he's like he's like fuck life. Um I've I've lost my I've lost my marriage. I've you know, I've lost my kids. Uh I'm I'm living with someone else's wife. Um I'm not getting any sex from it because I'm not into that. Uh, mm-hmm. So all I'm getting is the fucking nagging. Um, but no, he, he, he's, he's, he's livid, right? Um, so yeah, so then he has to, they, they, they have to make a new story, which is why I said earlier that, it, that they change. They change what this is, what the whole thing, the whole concept of it is about. Another thing that he does, which is really interesting, he constantly, he can't stand to think that someone else might take over um, as leader after he dies and he's knocking on a bit now, you know, at this time he's probably in his late sixties or, you know, early sixties, he's, he's getting on. So he puts clauses in it. Like, you know, he, he makes everyone over a certain period of time believe that he is the one, he is the Messiah. So without him, he's the key, he's the ticket aboard this ship. So it's, it's all, it's all gearing up to just sort of serve and massage his ego. Um, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which so is quite... without, without, it's like he's set up this group, this colony yep. of people yep. um, and, and followers, and he's set it up so that, um, you know, without him, they ain't going anywhere. There's no need to have a group. Yeah. It's not like he'll die and there'll be a successor because there's, there's no point exactly. uh, to succession if your one ticket off this planet is dead and yep. you haven't gone with him. No, totally. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That is, it's, it, you, you need, he's your bestie, basically. All right. He's your BFF, he's your everything. Um, so yeah, skipping forward now. So we go to like 1996. Um, and he, Wait, hold you know, up, hold up. Back- we, probably, we probably skipped this bit. Um, you say he's changed what they believe in. What is it they currently believe in now then? So from the point where, where Nettles has died. So she dies. He has now convinced everyone that their souls need to leave their body in order to meet up with a spaceship or with the aliens. Uh, you know, he maybe doesn't say spaceship at this point um, in order to avoid Armageddon effectively. So now, so now instead of your, your body going up, it's your spirit going up. So he, so he, he totally flips and says, you know, and obviously at this point he's probably thinking, well, how am I going to do this? The only way that we can do this is by fucking ending it killing ourselves right but he does but he doesn't say this to the people at this point because he i guess there's no way of him tying this in like how, where are we going when are they coming when are the aliens coming to pick us up so this is where it skips to kind of like 1996 where he he learns about the hail bop comet which is this comet that cir- cir- you know orbits earth every 2000 years and there was rumors that the uh, there was a UFO in the in the tail of it. So fucking great. This matches his story down to a T. He's like, this is my chance. This is it. Um, not only is there this cool fucking uh, comet coming over, it's got an ash. It's got a, a UFO in in the tail of it. Great. So he then tells everyone that you know they need to start getting ready for their transition to um, to the comet. Now it's important to know that obviously earlier I said that there was like seventy members. Now over time. Some of those members were a bit flaky. Some of them, maybe as it went along, 
you know, you, you, you can't get them all. You can't catch them all. And uh, he, he, so some of them have obviously fucked off at this point. They've gone, no, you're mental. I was down, I was down for the sex stuff, but I'm not, this alien shit is, is not for me. So, um, so a bunch of them leave and it, and, and so this now leaves um, 39 people effectively or, or, or around that number. Um, but that's good. He turns around and says, you know, it's not about the amount of people you have. It's the quality of the people. And, you know, so he basically, I, I mean, I guess he uses his like army techniques and he regiments everyone. He makes sure that, you know, what time they go to bed, what time they sleep. Um, and, and at this point now, so around 1996, they've got money because a few members that have, uh, had like divorce settlements or, or estates have pledged money to the, to the, to the cult effectively. Okay. So they've, they've now, they're now not living in tents anymore. They're not little squatting nomads. They're, uh, they're, they're now, they now have a couple of houses spread, spread over the area. They're the church of Scientology. Um, well, that, that is funny that you said that because the, the, a, a lot of those batshit fuckers joined this one because they sort of, you know, they dabbled in the, the Scientology bit for a while and they're like, what the fuck is a Thetan? Uh, nah, I'll, yeah. I'll go to this other one. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't want Thetans. We, 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 just, we, want, we just want God and aliens, okay? I want God and aliens. That's is that it. too much to fucking ask That's for? That's it. I, will... I don't want to tell you, but basically, you don't want to tell them secrets. If you're in Scientology, you've got to go, yeah, then I slept with my sister and then, and then I slept with her cousin. And is there anything else you're hiding? Uh, I stole a pog when I was eight. So this one is um, an absolutely like, you don't need to confess any of your sins. You just get on board, no. believe everything this old dude says, completely yeah. happy to go along with him when he changes his mind um, and don't ask any exactly. questions. And, you know, mm -hmm. just ultimately kill yourself. Um, if, um, <clears throat> if John Travolta started asking people to kill themselves uh, in the name of Scientology, mm -hmm. how many people would do that, do you reckon? You'd get some. You'd get some. Oh, oh for you, sure. You would get You'd some. You'd get some. Yeah. I mean... There'll be some people out there, myself included, who fucking love Greece. Um, and they'll go, Danny's asking me to kill myself. Better do that. Uh, I'm not saying I would, but I, I think about it. Sure. Um, you know, for him. All right. Cool. You are the 101. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Danny Zuko and those trousers anyway. could ask me to do anything. Yes, I, no, I totally agree, man. I totally agree. Um, so, so yeah, where, where, where were we? Right, so, so the comet, the comet. He's telling everyone about this comet. And now he's saying to people, obviously, we've got to get rid of it. We, only our spirits can go. So now he starts formulating this plan. Um, and he, he, he basically gives everyone pre-warning that it's the time's coming um, for them to, to, to exit, to transition um, into the spirit into into the spirit realm to exit their vehicles i think it was a uh, that that, that the is the exact use. word yeah. it, so do, do you know what's even fucking crazier uh the, the when they i mean i'm skipping ahead but it's just because it's fucking hilarious so, so when they were found when the bodies were found they had little patches made up on their t-shirts that said heaven's gate away team okay i mean i've seen uh, to be fair i've seen the artwork it looks pretty fucking cool but um, anyway, you know, th that's how committed they were. Um, and so, so yeah, so he, he starts getting people ready. And also he does something that he hasn't done in a long time, which is uh, it's online. You can, you can see it. Uh, we'll put, we'll put a link to this video in the description, but you, um, he, he outwardly, he, he puts up a video basically saying, you know, we're going, um, if anyone wants to join us, now's the time to do it because, you know, you're just going to be left behind on this fucking shithole earth. Um, and Armageddon's coming for you, baby. And that's it. You know, he says, it's now or never. Um, I think people decided not to, um, if I'm honest. They, they weren't that invested. So he didn't really grab a, a bunch of people there. Uh, he, was, he was set with his, uh, with his 39 people. Yeah, um, but a few a few people I read um, uh, who had left the group beforehand because they didn't necessarily 
they weren't so committed or they weren't, uh, they didn't necessarily believe everything or their lives had changed and they wanted to explore other mm-hmm. things. Um, and uh, when they heard the news, when this video went out, that they'll all be exiting their vehicles, um, they're like really bummed out. I'm really disappointed that they actually didn't go. So they're still living their lives, believing yep. the ideology that, uh, Mate, that Apple exactly. had taught them, but not an active member of the group. And no, as soon as we it, call those pussies, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, you fucking pussied out, mate, and you'll regret that forever. And but you know what? The funny thing is, these people are regretting it. They're going, ah, oh, I wish I'd kill myself yeah. with them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, you'd you'd seriously imagine that it would be like fucking lucky escape that one? No, no, no. Like, even though everyone has has ridiculed this for years, they're still going. I missed out. I knew I'd fucking miss out. Miss My out, parents yeah. are fucking... And that's so everyone's now. disappointed in me. I, they've all exited their vehicles. I can't I can't do that now. So I'm just going to have to carry on living, I guess. That's annoying. Yeah. Because if even if I was to kill myself now... The ship's gone. The shi- yeah, the, the Hellbop comet's it's gone. gone. Yeah, I've missed the, the boat. The cruise is left, mate. I've missed it's the It's left boat. the port. Yep. Fucking hell. Um, so yeah, there are a few of those livid people out there. I mean, I would disagree and say you... You were fucking lucky. I mean, you should have gone, to be fair, but you you know, you were lucky um, that your pussiness got you out of it. Uh, what was that? Did you just, did you just drop did you just drop your wallet with all your money in it? Is that what that was? No, we can cut that out, though. Oh, I, I want to leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So he... Um, Yes. Yeah, so now, so now he's telling everyone that he, they need to get ready. He puts out this videotape telling everyone they need to get ready. So the day that they've set, it actually happened over three days. Um, the, the suicides and, uh, it culminated on March the 26th, which was of 1997. And this is when the bodies were, were found due to an, uh, an anonymous tip off. But they, what they, what they did effectively is they, they took so they got phenobarbital, which is um, a drug that is used to control epileptic seizures. Um, I don't know how this was just readily available for them, um, but they picked that one. Um, in my in my mind, there are tons more fun drugs that that they could have chosen, um, but they didn't. They took they took seizure repelling drugs, um, alcohol, which you know, fair enough. You want to get your buzz on. Um, and suffocation. They all they 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 had someone help them put basically I, I guess plastic bags over their heads, um, which is it's pretty fucking grim, man. That's horrible, man. Like, like yeah. it's it's. I mean, jo- all joking aside, it's so sad that like thirty nine people that they, they, they all fucking listened to this whopper. Um, well, the the two whoppers, um, and and they got to this point. Um, and so get, it's, it's odd, right? When the bodies are found, they all had, uh, well, we'll put a picture of this now above, but they all had black trainers, black Nike trainers, the same ones, which is great because, you know, when you die and your soul's leaving your body, you definitely want comfort. Oh man, um, got you sporty, get your sneaks on, sport, yeah. Sporty comfort. Um, we all know, you know, those air cush pads on the bottom of your foot. Right, so they've got those, stylish as fuck. Yeah, but they're the Heaven's Gate um, away team, so they're probably expecting to do some sort of physical activity when they get to where they're going. Yes, yes, they were the away team, and they had patches, and they had these Nike trainers, so they were looking fly. Okay, so they were looking fucking fly. They've got these trainers on. They were all draped in the same purple cloth uh, over them, uh, and they all had $5 worth of change in quarters in their pocket. Now... Just digest that for a second, sir. Uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to pay the ferryman? Pay the, ferry, pay the ferryman. Exactly. Exactly. They've, the eight, right. What do you not want to happen? You, right. You, you've killed yourself. Your soul's floating away. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. There's a ship. Cool. Right. We're at the ship. Right. All right, chaps and chapesses. How's it all going? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be such an exciting time. Yeah. Oh. Do you all have your your five dollars in quarters? Did you yeah. did you your bring ent- those? Your entry fee. Your to entry the, fee. To the UFO. Oh, you didn't. Sorry, mate. You you can't come. No, you know you can't go back to your body either. But you you, you can't come. I, I am sorry. Um, excuse me. Can I ask a question? Why do you need it in change? Good question. Uh, change is important. We need. When you get to the other side, there's going to be an arcade. 
Okay. And the so arcade. I, yeah, this is this is wild, right? This is wild. And I'm gonna jump in here because I'm gonna have to Go say, on. I'm gonna say something and it's it. it's controversial, but this story, and what we're doing is we're making fun of this story because of how fucking nonsense it is. Yeah. It's, it's hard wild. not to, man. Yeah. Yeah. But why how is it any different from any other religion in history? Everyone, do what I say. Do exactly what I say. There's no proof that I can give you as to why you should follow me. Um, you just need to, okay? Um, and yeah. um, if you eat my body, which is inexplicably some bread, and drink my mm -hmm. blood, which is also just wine because blood is gross, um, of course you know, is. you will go to a special place. So when your body yep. is worm food, you are going to live there and all your mates are going to be there. Um what about all my enemies? No, they don't exist. It's just if you if Absolutely you twist not. it, it's just as nonsense. Yeah, um, it's well, of course of course it is. I mean this, but 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 it shows you openly, right? This that that what you've just said shows you that I I mean I don't believe this is my my, my own personal belief. I don't believe that it's it's a bunch of crazy people, right? For a start, I just think that there are there are people out there that are really susceptible to being. Uh, being told something and going, yeah, that's that suits me. That makes sense to me. Yeah, um, dude, dude. Oh, ultimately, there's a, there's a um, there's a. I think it's a Richard Dawkins quote. Um, mm -hmm. uh, big atheist, and um, he. It's the human condition, basically. It's not just certain types of people who can be more susceptible to others. Um, yeah, there's always going to be an element of that, but I think the human humankind want to know. The answers, you know, we the Absolutely. fact that we study science, yeah, um, even even now, like we want to know the answers. Um, mm -hmm. So, Richard Dawkins says, I think at the beginning of one of his books, uh, he said, "If I was to tell you, mate, like run, yeah, like like run." I'm fat. I can't. Yeah, well, but, yeah, I can yeah, imagine. You <laughs> as 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 a comment, <laughs> like you're going to have questions. Right, you're going to be like, um, why? why? Uh, yeah, what? And how you, far? And then there you go. Like, how far? Yeah. What happens when I get there? Where am I running to, mate? I'm not going to do yeah. that. You know, I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. If I was like, mm. dude, um, run to the end of your garden and back. I'm going to do the same. Yeah, we're all in it together. Right, we're timing it. Okay, it's great, you race. Could be a great load of fun. All of us together go have a big load of fun. Yeah, and when we're done. Um, if you run all that distance, yeah, at the end, I've got a big trifle for you. Yeah. You're okay. I'm paraphrasing Richard Dawkins. I don't think he said anything right, specifically loved, about a trifle. I fucking love trifle. So now you've got my attention. Okay. Right, here now we go. I'm up for so you can running. see how this works. Um, mm -hmm. you know, people will live a lot more or tend to live a lot more fulfilled, uh, meaningful lives in the, and I guess, me, you know, the, the meaning of their life is in the, the eyes of the, liver ultimately isn't it it's yeah. it's it's it, how meaningful someone's life is is uh, is all uh, subjective but mm -hmm. you know they live meaningful happier lives contented lives believing they know, that they know the answers um yeah i think it's funny what you mentioned earlier as like you say like some people were into scientology but then jumped onto this one you know that yeah, yeah. that's where i kind of go okay right you're a human, and as a human, you're mm -hmm. naturally inclined to want to fill this void in your knowledge with some answers to make you live a more sure. fulfilled life. Yeah. But I want to choose what those answers are from the prescribed list of possible answers I have in front of me, which Absolutely. are all the different religions, and I'm going to hop between them. Mm -hmm. That to me is just fucking stupid. Yeah. Well, it is. And also, if you, if you, if you put that context into this exact story, all these people had to choose this as their ending. This was how they wanted their story to go, which fucking boggles my mind. It's fair enough if you think your ending is just live a nice life, try not to shag your next door neighbor's wife, and you're going to go to a good place that's going to be well fun with none of your enemies, right? That sounds fucking delightful. But this one doesn't even have a great thing. It's just, you're going to go aboard the UFO. You've got to pay $5 to get on. And when you get there, who fucking knows what happens? You just go above humanity and you're going to evolve into a lizard man. Uh, I think that's effectively <laughs> fucking absolutely wild. But I mean, to tag on to what you've just said there, um, I think that that is, 
that's what I personally find is the issue is that people, people do want answers, but rather than just going, maybe we don't have them. Maybe we aren't there yet in, in society and humanity to have the answers, which we're very clearly not. Um, people want to believe so badly that they'll attribute anything to finding out the meaning of why they're here and what they should be what they should do it's nuts to think that you want to be told what to do all the time like whether it's like at work or um just everywhere there's always rules and this is no no different this thing had rules it had structure for and these people they weren't stupid right there's some of these people worked in it some of them were mechanics they're not idiots they can go out and earn a living yeah, I think you get, but I think you also get um, uh, people like this any, in any walk of life. I think, I think what yeah. he had here, um, they were a little bit more susceptible to being told what they, what they're to believe, um, mm-hmm. because I think they all probably felt like misfits in their own lives. They all felt like that they were they, they were different from other people. And you can be successful, you yeah. can be rich, you can be a billionaire like and feel different to other people in society mm-hmm. around you. And I think I think that's what Absolutely. they all had in common. Um and so when he told them that actually, you know, you're the chosen lot, we're going, um basically mm-hmm. you've been uh, what did he say he said impregnated by an alien spirit. Um he was telling them I think I don't know what point of one of his stories that was but he tried to convince it's funny, them. It's funny that they've been impregn- impregnated. They're not even allowed to have sex. So, I mean, not that that's the first religion for that to uh, be a problem. <laughs> but uh, it's still mental, right? Still mental. You can't have sex. You're gonna be, but, but you're going to be impregnated with an alien spirit. Fuck me. I don't even get to have sex and I've still got to have a baby. Right. I don't even know um, where to go. Um, but yeah, so any, uh, my point being that Impregnated by an alien spirit. These guys are going to go, oh man, yeah, that must be it. I mean, I feel different from all my friends or my family and everything like that. And it's because I'm not a human. I've actually been impregnated by an alien spirit. And my ship is coming back for me and I'm going to jump on board. And yeah, so you've got the whole human condition wants to know the answers. Plus, I think yeah. these people were a little bit weird. Um, so, I mean, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to say weird. I mean, we all feel like no, uh, no, no, like uh, look, weirdos look, look, I, and I, I, creeps. I, I totally get it. I don't. I look. I with this in this story in particular. It's uh, at first when I first heard this story, I wanted to be like, who the fuck follows someone doing that shit? But the more you read about it, the more you look into it, and the more that you really think about it. It wasn't really these people. They were they were just look like you said. They were just looking for a place to fit in and a space to be told what to do and what the answers were. And you know, Marshall Applewhite, he and Bonnie Lou Nettles, they were both master manipulators. They had issues themselves. Um, they believed it fully themselves because you know, at the end of the day, Marshall Applewhite took his own life too. So they believed it fully, but they weren't happy. There was, there was shit that happened in their lives that made them go down this path. Not, not to also detract from the fact that, you know, they both grew up extremely religious. So they were already in the mind frame of believing what they were being told. So instead of not believing what they were told, they made a new thing to believe in themselves. And this is what then attracts other people. When, when someone talks confidently and acts like they have the answers, naturally, a lot of people want to follow that. Of course you do. And people who are in um, difficult, going through difficult times, difficult situations, um, they are more susceptible to believing uh, confident and influential people. Um, Absolutely. I do not want to put Jesus and Hitler in the same basket here, but... I feel, why do I feel like you're going to? I, okay, I don't mean to put Jesus and Hitler in the same basket, guys. Um, right. But they're damn right in the same basket. You look at okay. You look. I you look at Germany. Me. Yeah. You look at Ger- Germany in the uh, late 1930s. They've just come out of the, uh, the First World War. Um, they're going through a recession, a big depression. Um, yeah. Economically, it's not working out for them. Um, you know that they're, they're not really liked amongst the Europeans. Um, uh, and you got some dude turning up shouting around, banging pans on the stage saying, hey, I'm the guy who can save all of you. Yeah. yeah? I've got the answers. We've got, but- I've, got, I've, got, I've got the answer, yeah. And dude, you got to remember like, 
he convinced he he convinced yeah a gr- a, a whole country. I mean, a lot of people weren't of Nazis and didn't believe in them, but a lot of people really, really did. And he was convincing them that it was all the Jews' fault and he should murder them all. Yeah, which is man, which is I it, think it's more nonsense than just kill yourself, mate. I wish Hitler this... and his followers killed themselves, but like, <laughs> <laughs> like he 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 was the right person at the right time to come along, or the wrong person at the wrong time to come along and uh, and convince all these susceptible people. Um, at yeah. the same time, Jesus, yeah, was a guy, right? So whether you believe in God oh, right. or not, Jesus, Jesus Christ oh, right. was a guy, yeah? It, it's documented. Facts. Yeah. He, Facts, right. Okay. Good. I'm glad. Good. Yeah. He, he was a guy and he did have a few people follow him, right, at the time. Um, mm-hmm. This is historically proven. Um, so he had a few people follow him at the time, but you know, the world was crap at the time. You know, the world was really, really a bad place where, especially where he was. And, um, you know, got the Romans taken over, changing the way everyone's way of life, you know. They're, they're happy to believe in someone that's telling them something good. That mm-hmm. is it. Uh, mate, uh, of course. And like, look, go, you know, I, I feel like we've we've slightly derailed the conversation, but Sorry, mate. it is important. No, 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 no. It's good. It's good because it is important to to say that, like, like you said, like even people people like Hitler, they themselves were religious, um, and they and there's, there's there's no mistake as to why there's parallels between these type these types of people. It's because rather than being followers of something, they want to be followed, and and that is that is the difference. There are a lot of people out there who want to follow. Um, but there's some that just want to be leaders. And it, it ultimately, if you're a strong enough leader and you say the right things, people are going to get on board with it. Um, and I think, to be honest with you, I think that sums up the episode. I think that rounds this up. I, 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 we could waffle, but I think <laughs> we're there with it. Um, any any lasting thoughts before we, before we say our goodbyes? No, man. I think it's just, like you say, um, it's a sad, sad story. Um, it these is. people... Uh, Killed them like thirty nine dead people, man. That's that, it's a lot, that's man. shocking. Um, sure, and yeah. Um, yeah, I just think the parallels that we can draw between other things in the world. Um, yeah, and and to be honest with you, <laughs> um, you talk about how back we... <clears throat> what shit? I agree though. Like and that and, that, and Tom and, Hanks, and come and at me, does, bro. The, Tom Hanks is Tom Hanks a Scientologist? Oh fuck, it's not Tom Hanks. Cut that out. No. No, no. Tom Cruise. <laughs> we should definitely leave it in. Please don't. If it makes Tom the Hanks, cut, Tom Hanks, don't right? come at me. If it, I love you. If this makes the cut, it's the best part of this episode. So there it is. Um, that's the that's the end of this week's episode uh, on Heaven's Gate. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's it's a crazy, crazy story um, about a couple of crazy people who. Um, ultimately wanted power over other people um, and they got what they wanted uh, whether it ended the way they wanted or not who knows um, but yeah uh, leave, leave some comments in the uh, description we love to read through them and don't forget to hit the subscribe button give it a big old like and uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at HMOPOD and to, for all things hear me out it's www.hearmeoutpodcast.co.uk see you guys next week Cheers. Peace.